I'm Marissa Norcross. And I'm Dave Freund, and this is The Next Page. Marissa, how are you today? I am great. How are you? I'm terrific. It is a beautiful day. It is, and we're just getting into October, which I, I just love October. It's your most wonderful time of the year. It is. You know, and I think I've shared this many, many times. I love when the seasons change. So, I, yep. you know, I do have an appreciation for all four transitions. Or, But, you know, I, I just, October is so beautiful here. It is. It, it really is one of the more beautiful months in Central mm-hmm. New York. Yeah. So just that, the colors become amazing. And as I look do. out, you know, we're, we're recording a little bit earlier today than yeah. normal. And I'm looking out the window of my office here and the sky is blue. Mm-hmm. Such a, such an amazing blue. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love so. to, I, I always just think that the, the sights, the smells, the sounds of October yes. are just yep. my favorite. So I, I hope everyone, you know, takes a minute to, I guess I shouldn't say stop and smell the roses, maybe uh, stop and observe the leaves crunching under your yes. shoes. Um, yep. But because, you know, soon. And appreciate, it, yeah. And appreciate all this, the, the, the smells of autumn. Yes. Yeah. You know, leaves have a certain smell, but then also the homes are different. We're cooking mm-hmm. different. We're. It's pie you know, it's season. Just, it's, it's, it's pie season. Exactly. <laughs> At least in my house notice, it is. <laughs> notice how I work that into food, as I always do. Oh, yes, I tend to do that. And and when we focus on things that are nice, mm-hmm. things that add value to our life and to others, it tends to lift our spirits a bit, mm-hmm. which kind of leads us into what um, we're talking about today. So last week we told our listeners that we would be talking about poor morale. Mm-hmm. And as I was writing the post, I was, you know, and, and in full transparency, I was trying to think of a title that would get people to read it. You know, it's one of the things that John Maxwell always said is when you write a page, make sure you end the page with an invitation to the reader to turn the page, mm-hmm. which is kind of what I was trying to do. And I was trying to explain what's it like when you're in a place of poor morale. And all I could think about was a candle. When you put the lid on a candle and the oxygen is just slowly consumed, it just goes out. Mm -hmm. That's what happens in an organization when there's poor morale. The life is literally sucked out of the organization. They consume all all the hope, all the belief out of the organization. And there's nothing left but people sitting around trying to figure out Where's my next opportunity? Mm-hmm. And, and, and if we think about it, all of our organizations, that any, there's maybe one company that I can think of that I interact with that isn't looking for people right now. Mm-hmm. I, had, I had one person call me. He said, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm looking for a job. And I said, well, you shouldn't have trouble finding it because they're mm-hmm. everywhere. Yep. And then as leaders, we need to be thinking, are oh, how are our people doing? Mm-hmm. You know, we, you and I mentioned before we hit record that there are certain industries that are paying extremely large premiums yep. for per hour to get people to work additional shifts, and they just simply won't. They're just shot. Mm-hmm. There's nothing left in the tank, so to speak, and all the money in the world isn't going to get them to work more shifts. So what is it that we need to do? Well, as leaders, we need to figure out, you know, do we have a morale problem? And, and I put four things down in my post today, you know, investigation, create belief, generate positive energy, and communicate hope. So let's start with the, the investigation. You need, to, leaders need to be honest with themselves. And if they're sensing poor morale, actually what they need to do is a 360. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you, I don't understand leaders that refuse to do 360s. It just doesn't make sense to me mm-hmm. that you would not want to know what's really going on in your organization. And that you really wouldn't care what people think of your leadership. So leaders, you know, just stand up straight, do the 360, and you're going to find out exactly how you can help correct the problems that your organization might have. So what are the causes of of poor morale? Um, One of the things that we can can kind of pass over too quickly are just poor systems. Mm -hmm. Poor systems, policies, and procedures. 
you know, and somebody say, what do you mean by poor systems? Well, the systems that you have in your company, do they help people do work or are they yeah. a stumbling block? Mm -hmm. If you've got software that isn't working right, or you haven't maintained your updates, or you, you're still working on an antiquated system, don't expect people to enjoy working on it. Yeah. Even I think some things too, I mean, so much has changed in yes. the way we work over the last 18 months that, you know, even if it's not that you're using an old software, an old system, or even just some of the processes in place, um, it's a, a time to to kind of look and say like, okay, who we were 18 months ago, Very good. both as people and as an organization is not the same. Right. And, you know, expectations have changed. Vision might have changed. I mean, you're depending on the type of industry you're in certain really foundational things have probably changed. Exactly. And are we aware of it? Which mm -hmm. leads me to my next point, lack of vision, touched on vision there. You know, do we, have we continue, are we continuing to communicate the vision? Yeah. You know, we're going through 18 months of some real difficulty and unusual times and, and has our vision shifted, mm -hmm. not changed, but is it, has it expanded or has it narrowed and, or have, is the vision the same and we just have stopped communicating? Mm -hmm. Vision leaks. You can't over communicate vision. You got to keep doing it over, over and over. And people need to be able to see that. So, you know, it's like the old proverb says, where there is no vision, the people perish. So maybe a new proverb, a new proverb would be where there is no vision, the people leave. Yeah. Because they want to go where there's a purpose, where there's something bigger than, than what they're doing. The, the next note that I put here, I think people often overlook as well, and that's poor quality. If, if we accept poor quality or if our products just aren't where they need to be, you can't have positive morale. You know, I, I, I want to, I want to be able to tell people that where I work pr produces an amazing product, mm -hmm. uh, something people are really can't get, wait to get their hands on kind of thing. So the, the, the quality of it has to be second to none. And, and another one, and I talked about this, this might've been one of my first posts that I wrote, low expectations. Right. Mm -hmm. If we don't expect a lot of ourselves first, our team members and our organization, why should anybody else? Mm -hmm. And I love this quote. I actually heard this and I know I've shared it on the podcast, but I heard it on a marriage podcast and I keep sharing it in all my leadership classes is unspoken expectations are planned disappointment. Mm -hmm. So just tell people, this is what we expect. This is what we need. Have those high quality standards, have those high expectations for people. Um, and, and people will rise to the occasion. And then those that don't, you're realizing are probably on the wrong bus. So we're going to coach them to find a better place, a better place for them. Poor communications. You know, are we communicating effectively? I'm I'm in the process of reading a book about an amazing communicator, and, and we'll talk more about that um, next week. But just the way he crafted his communications was brilliant. And leaders need to realize that communication is critical. You can't lead if you can't communicate. And if you can't connect, you can't communicate. So that communications piece is huge. I, I jotted this one down just because I, I saw it when I was doing some quick research. Micromanagement can really kill morale. Mm -hmm. You know, you hire people with skill sets. Let them do their job. And, and one of the things that I think leaders miss too frequently is they look for, great leaders look for multiple right answers. And the reason why they do that is if their team comes up with an answer that can work and the team can select their own path or the leader can say, yeah, I like that. Let's try it. The team feels empowered. But if the leader has to be the one telling people, no, I want this, it just drives morale down. Sometimes it's necessary, but more than not, the team knows how to do what you've asked them to do. Let them do it. Don't, again, don't, don't micromanage. Don't tell them everything that they need. So those are the kind of things I think on the investigation side. So then what do we do now that we've, now that we understand that we have this problem, 
we figured out where it is and we started to make some changes, you have to create belief. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's interesting. This flows into the last one about hope, but you know why people people need to believe that there's a plan. They need to believe that there's a better tomorrow. And this is different than being positive. It's and we'll talk a little bit more of that in the communicating hope, but it's it's really this you know deep down inside that this is gonna work. Go there. Now, if we go back to don't miss the miss, we know that there's gonna take multiple tries to get there, but every time we try and we fail, we learn. So you need to believe yourself. And then you need to connect with the vision. And continually give that vision because that's going to be what the people are going to believe in. And also remember this, leaders, that people buy into the leader before they buy into the vision. So you got to be, you know, are you the, the law of modeling? Are you modeling what it is you're looking for? And can you continually keep communicating this belief, this vision? This is why we're doing what we're doing. Simon Sinek's why. People don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. And, and you know, Jeff Henderson, his book, Four, What Are You For?, if you can communicate those things to your people, they're going to believe. So now we get into positive energy. Um, and, and again, we're not talking positivity here. We're just talking about energy. So the question that I have we need to ask ourselves is, are we passionate? So Marissa, when you're passionate about something, how does it affect how you look at that? I think, you know, you, you're more excited about whatever it is, you know, if it's a project or an initiative or even a task, you know, we've talked about, you know, what gets you out of bed in the morning. Those are the things that you're passionate about. And it's not that they're like easy or always like super enjoyable, but it's something that, you know, you're, you're passionate about and you want to put the work in and you're excited and you, you know, you're excited to see the outcome And to celebrate that. Exactly. And when, you know, something, and I like how you said it's it's not always something easy. You know, you're passionate about autumn. You like October. (laughs) You like everything that goes on around October. And that's, so it's it's easy for us to be passionate and excited about things that are just fun. Mm -hmm. But when you can be passionate about a hard task, a hard journey, like I can't wait to get up and work on this project today. I can't wait to get to the office and get my team together and work on this project. It's going to be hard. We've got a bad, you know, I say a bad deadline, a tight deadline. Mm -hmm. But we can do it. Mm -hmm. And we're going to enjoy it. We're going to enjoy working together. We need to realize that, you know, anything worthwhile is uphill. So let's go, team. And there's going to be times when I'm going to have to cheer you on and you're going to have to cheer me on. But it's going to be great. Mm Mm-hmm. And, and, and other people say, wait, my personality profile just isn't one that I show excitement. Well, if you're a leader, you need to fake it a little bit. You know, just show excitement. You can smile, be happy about it. Don't just always walk around, you know, concerned about what isn't getting done. Catch people doing things right. We actually get the behaviors that we recognize most frequently. So if you catch people doing what you'd like them to do, And praising them for it with things similar, just like, hey, thank you so much. That was awesome. Mm -hmm. You're going to get more of that because they want to win your approval and your affirmation. One of the things, you know, are you celebrating success? And celebration is critical to building positive energy. Mm -hmm. And and I remember once uh, we were, when I was at Self Lock and, and we were going through a really rough time and I had just started coming out of my leadership failure mode and trying to, when I was too much like a boss and I was trying to relearn what it meant to be a leader. And one of the things that we had done for years was that if we met our monthly targets, I would buy the guys, gals lunch. And so typically it started out being dinosaur barbecue and believe it or not, they got tired of it. And they said, can we do something other than dinosaur like pizza and wings? I said, sure, which was easier for me anyway and cheaper for the organization. but. We went through a stretch where we simply weren't meeting our monthly targets, ever. It was just a mess. And I recognized that. And I could tell that people just needed a party. Mm -hmm. So as we started off the next month, 
I put a sign up, pizza and wings, you know, Tuesday at noon. And people came up to me, Dave, did we meet our target? I said, no, we just needed a party. Yeah. You know, I paid for it out of my own pocket. Company didn't have to pay for it. But it was just, I had to give them something to be happy about. Mm -hmm. And what was interesting was positive energy came out of it. And people, there was a little bit more of a bounce in their step. Yeah. And they started believing there's hope. We can do that, which moves us to communicate hope. Uh, you know, Napoleon said leaders are dealers in hope. And and I might, made a note here of a question. Think about this. When was the last, I want our listeners to think about, when was the last time you heard someone give a talk or a speech that was really hopeful? I honestly can't think of one. Mm-hmm. I know, I'm trying to... Trying to think. Yeah. You know, we get we get all these politicians and community leaders, and when was the last time they gave us something to be hopeful of? All they do is 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 criticize, slam, complain, whine, point fingers. I want somebody to give me a reason to believe in them. And hope isn't the same as positive. Positivity is a feeling. And this is where I have real trouble explaining it. Positivity is a feeling, but hopefulness is a belief. It's deeper. Mm-hmm. You, can, you can actually be feeling somewhat down, but still have hope that, you know what, maybe tomorrow won't be so bad. Maybe tomorrow we'll get to where we need to go. And you do this by, even when you have a failure, what did we learn from it? Did we move closer to our goal? Mm-hmm. Um. The other thing that you can do is you can remind people of past successes. You know, when we go through rough times, say, hey, we've been here before. Look what we accomplished before. So what can we borrow from what we did before that we can use going forward? Mm -hmm. The other thing is, one of the ways you give people hope is you give them a path. You give them a path and you give them tools. This is the path I think we need to take. Here are some tools to help us get there. And when you do that, you've created hope. Mm-hmm. So those were the points that I had. Um, what are your thoughts? I think, you know, another, when it comes to a few of the points that you made, especially with you know, generating positive energy and communicating hope, I think um, another kind of pre-step to doing those things is Think about what you're surrounding yourself with. And I guess this can come from both sides. So if you're a leader trying to work through some of these things, if you're trying to generate positive energy and communicate that passion and show excitement and celebrate and communicate hope, if you aren't surrounding yourself by that, so if you are listening to hopeless news or, um, you know, surrounded by people who aren't giving off positive energy, then it's going to be hard to communicate that to yep, to your team. Right. And then I, from the flip side, you know, if you're the one kind of on the receiving end of this, right, if you're looking to your leader for hope or um, trying to even just generate positive energy in your team, the same idea applies, right? If, if, you, yes. if you are working closely with a few people at work, right, maybe spend more time with your colleagues who are passionate and excited and have a positive Absolutely. outlook um, because that will, that will definitely play a, a big role in accomplishing these things. Yeah, a- absolutely. You know, it's, it goes back to when we were talking about leading in challenging times, secure your oxygen mask first. Mm-hmm. You know, leaders have to make sure they're surrounding themselves with people that are going to help them stay where they need to be. And, and the other thing is when, you know, one of the points that I had in the post, when you assess where the negativity is coming from, when the, where, who is, is, is um, sucking the positive energy out of your organization or what is doing it, you need to be willing to make the tough choices. And there may be people that are just so buried in negativity that they can't stay on the team. If you can't get them to shift, we have to coach them to find an organization where they may fit better. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, as Dave Ramsey says, you set them free. The other thing that I thought of when you were mentioning that was, you know, what other things do you do that, that energize you? Are there, is there music? Are there podcasts? Um, are there activities that you can do? Some people, 
you know, and it's not me. If they go for a run, they feel energized. If they do a workout, they feel energized. Mm -hmm. Yeah, That's not me. You know, <laughs> I can have a nice meal and I can feel energized, <laughs> but I'm just not the guy that's going to say, oh, I can't wait to go out for a run. Um, but for me, and this was something that I was able to do Saturday for a few moments, I actually was, was able to just go out in my old boat by myself because mm -hmm. I, I, I put it in myself and I was taking it to to a camp to give some folks some rides, but there was probably 15 minutes when it was just, I was just alone. Mm -hmm. And wow, that was just so energizing for me. Mm -hmm. You know, I even said to my wife, you know, I may just take a day sometime, just go by myself if nobody's available to go and just have mm -hmm. this moment, these moments to just reflect and think and plan. Yeah. You know, Right. And that probably, the... you know, generated some positive energy for you. Obviously you're excited about it. You're passionate yes. about it. You yes. probably left that experience feeling like, yes, I will get through whatever I'm going through right now. So that's exactly hope, right. And and it's yes. not always something super dramatic. I mean, even just thinking about the last 18 months, like, OK, it's not always going to be like this or, you know, things are getting better. You, you walk away yep. from those experiences, big or small. Like you said, it was just 15 minutes alone on your boat yes. with a different perspective. Yep. That you, you carry know, on actually, to other people that you interact with. Right. And I took pictures of the lake mm -hmm. and with enough of the boat so I could, you could know where I – so I have that. So I can go back and revisit that. Mm -hmm. And I can revisit the emotions then. Mm -hmm. And that, that, that hopefulness that I was experiencing when I was, when I was there. So it's – you know, you take ownership. Leaders need to take ownership first of themselves to get that – that hope going, that belief going, that and clarify your vision. Maybe you need to go spend some time alone somewhere to get the vision clarified mm -hmm. so that you can come back and address it with your team. But the point is that if we're not those that are really the people we need to take our organization to the next level, we'll go find another organization. Mm -hmm. It's serious. I think we covered it. Yeah. I think so. Now, what are we cool. talking about next week? Courage. Mm, okay. So that's all I'm going to say right now. Sounds um, good. And I, but I've already started working on it. So, and I'm sure this weekend you're going to try to get out and enjoy a bit more of October. Mm -hmm. You're going to have your own little October fest, so to speak. <laughs> yep. I'm as sure. as you as we move, because we all know what. We also we all know that the only redeeming quality in November is Thanksgiving. So. <laughs> <laughs> and, and actually, if it wouldn't be for Thanksgiving, November would be my least favorite month of the year. That's too funny. But there is Thanksgiving, so that sets it up for mm -hmm. my most wonderful time of year. It sure does. So with that, I'm Dave Freund. I'm Marissa Norcross. This was the next page. <laughs>